Hello everyone, and welcome back to Anyone Can Learn to Code. Okay, today I'd like to build a game. I'll call it the number guessing game. Basically, the computer will pick a number, and we'll have to guess what it is. Let's make the first version of this game. So we'll start with a welcome message. Okay, welcome to the number guessing game. Let me just save this file. And I guess we'll call it guessing.rb. And I'll put another line to the screen that tells the user to guess a number between 1 and 100. Next, we're going to decide what the right answer is. So let's make a variable called the right answer. And let's say the right answer will be 44. Next, we're going to have the user enter something into the terminal using gets and store that inside another variable. We'll call the variable guess. That will be the user's guess. So guess equals gets.chump. And I'm going to add to the end of that 2 underscore i. The reason why I didn't just do gets.chomp this time and instead did gets.chomp.2i is not the main focus right now, but I'll explain it briefly. Anytime we use the gets command, whatever the user enters is stored as a string. However, we want to compare the user's guess with the right answer, which in this case is actually a fixed num, a number, rather than a string. And we'll need to compare apples to apples, or in this case, fixed nums to fixed nums. What the 2i method does is a method you can call on certain objects like strings and convert them to a number. So gets takes the user's input as a string, and 2i will convert it into a fixed num. And let's just demonstrate that briefly using IRB. Let's take the number 44 and check its class. We know that's a fixed num. Now let's take the string 44. Let's prove this is a string, even though 44 is a number, but when it's inside quotes, it's actually a string. It's as if it was letters, but in this case, the letters just happen to be numbers. Now let's do 44 the string 2i, which converts it into the fixed num 44. Let's just demonstrate that by seeing what class this is. That is a fixed num. So 2i converts strings and sometimes other objects into numbers. Let's return to our program. So far we have that the right answer is 44, and we have accepted the user's guess and stored it inside the variable called guess. Now, let's say if the user's guess is equal to the right answer, then we'll say you win. Else, meaning if it's not the right answer, we'll say you lose and okay let us run this program ruby guessing that rb okay let's guess a number between 1 and 100 88 you lose run it again 44 you win now although this game is addicting you may have some ideas of how you can make this game a bit more fun one issue that this game has is that the right answer is the same every time you play it. And you as the programmer certainly can't really play this game because you already know the answer before you play the game because you had explicitly set the right answer in your code. So what we really want to do is for the computer to pick a new random number every time we play. There is a simple little trick to accomplish this, which is also not the primary focus of this episode, but all you have to do is replace the number 44 with rand parentheses 100, which picks a random number up to 100. Let us save this and run the game again. Pick a number between 1 and 100, 44, you lose. Okay, so now this game is crazy fun, but let's make it even better. Let's make it that you have a certain amount of tries to guess the number before you lose. Let's say 10 tries. So how can we accomplish this? 
Basically, we want the program to run these lines of code 10 times. We want to ask the user to type a number in 10 times, and each time we need to determine if it's the right answer and display the appropriate message. So what we need is a loop. A loop allows code to be run over and over again as many times as you wish. There are actually many different ways to have a loop in Ruby, but let's use the easiest one for now. We are going to run this code 10 times. So to do that, we say 10 dot times do and put end at the end of the loop. To make things easier, we're going to indent these. Let's also change this line from you lose to nope guess another number. This way, every time you guess a number, we don't say that the user lost. He still has another nine tries. Now, after the loop is over, after the 10 tries, we can then say, you lose. So basically, if the user actually gets past all 10 tries and the program proceeds to the next line, we'll tell the user that he lost. Obviously, this program still needs more improvement, but let's play the game as is. Guess the number between 1 and 100. 50, 30, 60, 88, etc. And you can see after 10 tries, it tells me that I lost. But this game could use even more improvement. What happens after the user wins? Currently, it will tell him that he won, but the code will still loop again and will still allow the user to enter more choices and eventually tell him that he lost. So what we want is that if the user wins, the game ends. There's a simple way to do that with the word exit. Exit ends the program. So if the user wins, then the game ends. Let's demonstrate that by temporarily getting rid of this random number and going back to 44. Run the game again. So if we pick 44, it says you win and the game ends. Let's go back and change that to the random number. So we've covered a lot in this episode and you will definitely want to practice all that we've learned. The main takeaway is that in programming, there is a concept of a loop, which runs a piece of code multiple times for the number of times that you wish. There are also loops that can run code indefinitely, or sometimes an infinite number of times unless a certain condition has been reached. We'll explore other types of loops later, but this serves as a basic introduction. A good homework exercise would be improving this game yet further by having the computer tell you whether your guess is higher or lower than it should be. See the show notes for more details. Until then, practice your loops over and over and over again. Thanks for watching. Anyone can learn to code.